Hey everyone, welcome to uh, Recruiter Roundtable Season 2, Number 10, Contract and Temp Staffing. Um, as I had said, I have no clue what is going on with that, but I'm in hopes that we can um, I am I'm in hopes that we can uh, uh, get some experts on here that will help us. So let's see what happens. And for some reason, my camera's off, but everybody else is here. And I know Dominic is going to introduce Mason Swafford, and we're waiting on Jeff Adams, who is also a uh, a guy who's done a lot of um, temp and contract. That's going to give us some info as well. So go ahead, Dominic. Yeah, no, I'm Dominic Mai, Plot CEO Search Group. We do mostly direct hires and have done uh, temp staffing, contract staffing, but. I was introduced to Mason a few months back and he's been working on this tool and I'll let him introduce himself and his background, but it's, uh, I think it's going to be a game changer uh, and it's, there's still kinks in it and he's working it out, but down the road, especially in the temp staffing space, this is going to be huge. Uh, Mason, you want to introduce yourself, your background and tell him what you're about? Yeah. yeah, good to meet you all and hi to everyone on YouTube. Um, so I'm Mason Swafford. Uh, my background, I'm not from the staffing or rec recruiting world. Uh, I previously was an AI engineer working on self-driving cars and facial recognition. So that's like my background comes from the AI side of things and then got into staffing, you know, just from hearing about it from friends that were working as recruiters and thought this is, you know, really interesting industry. I wonder if there's stuff I can build here to to help make everyone more efficient. And so for the last year or so, I've been working on kind of AI tools, and the, the first tool is a, a calling system that can call candidates, have a full conversation with them on the phone, you know, talking through job requirements, do screening questions, answer any questions they have, um, kind of that full, you know, imagine you're you're talking with ChatGPT, but it's all on the phone and, and calling candidates and worked over SMS as well and, and email coming soon. but. Um, that's kind of a, you know, a, a short bit on me and, you know, Dom is, is one of our early adopters. I, and, uh, you know, I think as he kind of mentioned, like we're early, it's not perfect yet. You know, it's not going to work for everything yet. I don't think it's ever gonna, you know, take everyone's job. It's just another tool to use that, you know, you have to be that curious mind that can say, here's how to use this tool to make me a hundred times more efficient. I can't just give it everything and it's going to go on autopilot um so i'm hoping to learn from you guys and then connect with anyone that you know wants to kind of try it out and, and be one of our early adopters as well what does the tool yeah. actually do like totally like, yeah, so like... It... yeah yeah so uh, basically it's like you give the 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 tool the job description you give it a list of people you want to call and it'll call them. It'll it'll suggest questions that you know it thinks based off the job description it should chat about. But you can you can change those questions as well. And it'll call all of them, have a conversation, and kind of give you summary points of, hey, this person oh, does Jesus. have you know you wanted five years of experience. This does this person has five years of experience. You know they they worked at you know Siemens before, and that's what you wanted, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then you know you can you can have it book a follow-up call with you or depending on you know if it's more high volume work you might just you know read the transcript or, or read the summary listen to the call and pass them along but you know if it's maybe higher level stuff you might want to have the have uh, the ai schedule follow-up call with you is it more for um uh, active candidates because i can't see that really working on a cold call it's more of like a warm call like guys who apply to jobs is that Kind of the idea about it like here we have 50 applications my ai is going to call these 50 guys and ask them these 10 questions i, I honestly i mean dom as i said early adopter it's, it's kind of a tool for you guys to figure out how exactly you want to use it i think the easiest use case is yeah i have you know a high volume position on indeed i got 100 applications everyone just spammed yes on all of my pre-screening questions you know Let's okay. People are, that actually is a bad right? idea. And that could apply on the contract side too as well. That's, you know, you're definitely dealing more, and correct me if I'm wrong, Dominic and anybody else, when you're dealing in contract, it's more active candidates, right? We're not going after passive candidates on contract. It's right. really can't recruit someone to leave a permanent position to come work on contract. Yeah. No, and we did a test call. I put in a business development director position that I had open. And what's cool about it is it also sends text and it pings them twice. 
and you can change in there whatever you want it to say in the you know while it's calling and then it gives you a summary kind of like autopilot it'll give you the transcript right after so you can be like oh, wow. all right well this is a candidate that's worth calling and it will schedule follow-up calls and you can pick how many different voices do you have uh mason like uh seven. we got we got six right now so there's two male two female and then two two british voices um that, so kind of and i think yeah, lisa works the best. that's kind of cool yeah <laughs> yeah lisa lisa's my favorite <laughs> is that lisa's in here but uh how, how, many, how, long, voice, but. how long have you had it working mason um i guess the, the Depend, like depends what you define as working you know it's, it's constantly improving like i would say yeah every week it's getting better so it's been it's been something for the last three months um i, was I would say, say only... dominic is using it right so yeah. well yeah. well mason's not from mit he went to stanford so you know, he's got it takes it a little longer yeah no, i, I just wonder how long dominic's been using it and, uh... did you no, have like, success started... with it dominic I just I just started playing around with it. Like okay. I'm just starting to play and, and tweak it and give them feedback because over time it's gonna learn, right? And then it's gonna just get be dialed, so dialed in where is I it, think it, when we ramp this, up staffing, it's gonna work great. Is this something that you can share with us and show us how it's done on a by sharing your, your, screen? your screen, Mason? Yeah, yeah, I could I can do that. Um who's got a job that they want to uh to call about? Send a link to a Indeed or something. Hey, while Anybody? someone's doing that, um, I don't know who's going to do it, but I feel like I experienced this when I was trying to buy a car. Um, and I had this one perfect salesperson who would call me. And it's I just had a feeling it was AI because the voice was so calm and collected the whole time. It didn't matter like what I said back <laughs> um, and just the follow up and follow through. And it was extremely polite. And then whenever I would end up getting like on the phone later about something very specific, it was never that same wonderful gentleman who, you know, would do those like early calls. So is that kind of how it, how it works where it's, it's, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I guess we're gonna see. So yeah, um, I don't, could be something similar. I don't have an Indeed job. I got this financial job that's in uh, Georgia through Loxo, but I don't know if I can share it. All right, no, no worries. I'll just grab one um, from. Okay. Make sure you're not extremely polite because Donna's gonna show it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dominic, have you have you used it to a point yet where so has anybody asked you and, and said like, was that a real person? Do you know what I'm saying? Have you gotten any feedback from it? From so people? I ju I just did a test call yesterday <coughs> myself <laughs> just to test it out to see like, OK, where do I got to put, you know, how how do we got to spread out? Because you was telling me like, OK, every time you put a dash, it will pause for a second. Right. So I didn't know that. And then so we were going through that. And adjusting it, and that's so when well, well, like, talks like me. Hi, this is Tom Alessio. How are you? Yeah, doing? yeah. <laughs> you had to be like times yeah. two. <laughs> so, so yeah, and I think like Mason, like you said, like it will just constantly get better over time because you know it's training itself, the model. I I, I don't know. I I just think long term, it's gonna. No, be I mean, there's no great. doubt for for a lot of what. The, the the again active candidate right like you said you get a hundred applications on an indeed job right yeah you're, you're like i know that tom who's not here he has a, a he sends a form out right someone re applies to a job they get a hey thanks for applying thanks for your resume here's a, a loxo form fill this out right and then they fill it out and it populates loxo right and because he gets a lot of applications with some of the searches he does so i could see if you know we were doing contract staffing and i run an ad for a a bottle washer and i get 150 applications i'm not going to go through 150 applications it would be much easier to have an ai to call them up and go hey do you have this do you have this do you have this do you have this and they go yes 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 then we can move on to the next call like i can see the yeah. value in that instead of you know and, and, and man, i'm a cheap bastard so instead of paying somebody 20 bucks an hour to do that i can have ai do it <laughs> that that's exactly what i was telling him yes i'm like you're gonna have to figure out the cost model like because a lot of people that do use let's say india or uh the columbia philippines, where, wherever yeah. philippines you name it right like okay even if you're paying them five bucks an hour what 
what cost model can you go to with this, uh, let's say monthly right that makes sense for them it's like hey this is great this is working it gets to the first calls out of the way done and then one of our one of our recruiters still jump in and take that second or third call so mason does if if the ai calls and says hi this is kelly from uk is this tom alashio and i say yes then it then it goes the next thing but if i say no what does it do or does it even know to do that yet we can test it out here i'll, I'll have it call me it'll, it'll, ha it'll hang up on you <laughs> i like i like i like to ask my uh, my spam callers what their pronouns are <laughs> <laughs> all right so here it Shoot. Sorry, I, I I hung up. <laughs> That's okay. And you can share your screen too if you want. Do you know how to do that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. If we if, if you have it, like if you have the whatever they call it, API or the dashboard or whatever. Tom, you Tom, you're talking to a guy who's creating this app. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> do you know how to share your screen? But he did go to Stanford, so have you There's used the button? You know how to use Excel? <laughs> yeah, okay, sorry. Give me one sec. Maybe he doesn't know how to share a screen. <laughs> and um, I, I only went to Stanford. So Tom, are you a, are you an MIT grad? <laughs> Dude, I didn't. I didn't really graduate high school. <laughs> I just made fun of everybody who went to college. <laughs> well, yeah, we're not we're not quite Harvard. We're we're a poor man's poor man's Harvard. Okay. If only you could find a school with the same initials, right? Like. Michigan Institute of Technology or something. I went to MIT. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, you can work for McDonald's. You go to Caltech, C O W. There's, <laughs> there's a town here near me. It's called Harvard. And people said they went to Harvard, the high school. Ah. Well, yeah, it's go. like in Florida. We've got Jupiter. So, you know. There. Sorry, I'm running into some technical difficulties. Let me uh, let me work on this. Continue with everyone else. Okay, okay. Um, so yeah, when you're ready, that. we'd love to see it. So okay. So does somebody want to? So the questions that um, were on my mind, as far as temp and contract, whoever wants to to jump in, please do. Is do you start like if, if I'm going to start like look, we all do perm placements, right? In I do it in like structural, civil engineering, geotechnical engineering. Um, some manufacturing, some consulting firms, right? Everything is permanent. I do everything from, I've done, you know, $8,000 fees for drafting guys coming right out of school to, you know, vice presidents. If we were to get into temp contract work, do we start by like running ads and getting candidates based on the, you know, we have a 1% unemployment rate in the Delaware, Maryland, Virginia area. So do I run a bunch of ads for landscape guys or detailers or drafters or whatever it is. And then once we get a good pool of candidates, do we go out there and start selling our contract staffing services or do you sell contract staffing services when you're marketing permanent placement? Like, does anybody have an idea of how the best way to go about it would be? You could do both. Like what we did is we have a client that we do direct placements with and they have, you know, their manufa plastics manufacturing company. So they needed hourly temps to uh hourly temps at like 16 bucks an hour right but that adds up we had a, a andrews on this call we looked at our numbers and we made like what i think andrew bought 450 450k off of that and we only had what 10 employees in there can you hear andrew yeah i think at our peak we were actually uh 20 to 25 but yeah we did we did <laughs> right around are you 4k that so you're paying that that's that's 16 dollars an hour what are you charging the client a 50 percent markup so every hour they work oh, it is? and then you gotta yeah well you could go higher i mean if you can get 1.7 you know but you gotta factor in your burden so depending on the position if it's an office position right your burden is going to be less if, it, if it's in a, a high low driver or manufacturing position you're, you're going to factor in a little bit more so usually take out 30 percent so if you're making 10 bucks an hour every hour that person works figure you're taking home seven but that adds up every week you, you put in 10 20 like we had i couldn't believe how much money we were making residuals just and you're just billing out every week it's it's amazing, were you right? were you um doing all of the back of the house stuff or did you have a firm doing it for you 
in the beginning, I used uh, paychecks just for factory and that we did everything internally. And I stopped using them because I'm like, I'm not, you know, they charge, they, they get, they buy your invoice at, they give you 90%, hold 10% back and they charge you 1.5%, but that 1.5% adds up. So I started funding our own payroll, but that gets scary because at my past company with my old partner, we were owed 670 grand. And we told the, the companies that are right out of my window here, we told the visionary, we said, listen, we're gonna have to pull all the employees if we don't get paid. Um, and that scared them. And then they paid, you know, one big chunk and then another chunk right after. But you got to make sure you're running credit checks on these companies. And well, that's what we know, had, uh, we had we had reached out to back office staffing solutions boss Neil Lovitz company, and he'll do all of that for you. Invoice, fact, everything he does, he handles everything, and then he takes the cut, and you get the rest. And yeah, another good another good one is my my base pay. I can set you up the CEO Angela Alberti. She's awesome, and their customers. Fox Hire business. too, I think, is another one. Yeah, Fox Hire People Two Point Oh, um, you know, and then once you build it up and you got a good client, like, and you got you got the money sitting in your account, get rid of the factoring company because unless you unless you want to hold, I mean, you you are taking a risk by putting your money on the street, right? But you're also making a lot more. Is it that thing, oh. that was the thing that Neil was trying to explain to us that that it's not such a huge difference if you're if you're worried about the risk, right? Like he would say, look, we can do all of it. We can help you and, and show you how to do it all yourself. But borrowing the money is what is is where the unless you have it in house, that's where the that's where the, the fee is worth it. Yeah. And not only that, it's the paperwork that comes with it. Like for us, we just had a high low driver that crashed into the wall, right? Uh, AK, you want to kind of explain that? I mean, it was nonstop paperwork dealing with uh, workers comp. So, like, if you're not, it's a whole other animal, Tom. So, if you're not, set don't up even, that's why I said, like, that right there, said, I don't even want to deal. I like, I'll let boss back at staffing solutions handle that. I don't want to deal with workman's comp. I don't want to deal with guys running in the buildings. I don't want any of that bullshit. Yeah. So, I mean, that's why it's worth paying them, right? So, like, that is 100% worth it right there. The big, the biggest thing, the biggest thing I'd worry about is just them, the company not paying you, and and uh, then you all these guys' money because you're the you're the employee of record, and uh, and that's well, they would I, be the employer record. They would be the employer record if you use it back off. Yeah, but, but you know, but you get you get dragged into the bullshit, you know, the lawsuits and all the rest. If they they yeah. decide to, if they decide to just cut and run, you know file bankruptcy or get out that's why you're saying do the background checks and know your. oh yeah well like when i first started and i was doing it using the factory company i used advanced partners which is a paychecks company so they let you they'll run the background check and they'll tell you all right this client's approved for two hundred fifty thousand dollars. you know that's that's what we'll give you on this account um so it's definitely if you're just starting out and you don't want to deal with all the BS, because trust me, it's a lot. Andrew was, a, I hate dealing with paperwork, so Andrew does it. He was on the phone with travelers, you know, and the candidate, you know, the, every excuse in the world, and then they don't show up. It's it's all other animal. So See, I would uh, definitely go employer record route. To be but it, it's, a good example, it's a good example of knowing what you like to do and what you don't like to do. Like you got Andrew. Yeah. Uh, Craig, you got a question? Yeah, so there's another company called IES, Innovative Employee Solutions. They're out of California. I've used them in the past, a long time ago. But they only do certain types of positions. They'll only fund certain types of positions. So, for example, they won't do frontline manufacturing workers. Do you guys have that issue with the companies you just mentioned? No, they'll do uh, everything. So, like, my right. base pay will do everything. But boss, okay. at, boss has a list of things they won't do, right? Like, for example, they won't do... And depending on the state, they won't do tree cutting, right? They won't do domestic. They won't do um, anybody working for uh, tree trimmers, right? Like th they don't want anything to do with that. And, and I, I granted, we don't do that, but there was a list of what they will not do. Yeah, no, that that's all based on the workers' comp, though. Right. A lot of right. This, yeah. As to what they won't do. You, you, right. So IES, you have to have a conversation with them. If it's any sort of manufacturing at all, you have to have a conversation with them about, hey, this is the position I'm I'm looking at. They want a job description. They want to vet it to make sure that there's not a workers' comp issue that they might be afraid of funding. So that's that's the reason I asked the question. 
you know, know what else I love, love about my base. I'm sorry. I was gonna say also the particular workers comp rate of that particular company. Yeah. Yep. Too, is there, yeah. Too there are good ones and there are bad ones, you know. Yeah. So. And what I love about my base pay is you can kind of white label it like you were able to do with Loxo and you know share the, the you could basically the, the company will never know that you have a back office solution. Yeah, that's was also important too. Yeah. So like they they had no clue that I was using a back office, right? Which is great because you know. I mean, it's like, hey, yeah, we're working directly with you, but I'm not dealing with anything, so it's great. Um, so, Mason, when are you uh, ready? I'm good to go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, I was using the wrong phone number. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, a rookie mistake, I'd say. All right. Uh, so, we have Jeff one here, too. And, and, Jeff, one of the questions I asked, and and Dominic kind of did it a little bit, is do we do we run ads and get lots of candidates who are out of work that are looking that are willing to work contract or do we go get the contract opportunities first when you were doing it how did how did you guys do it uh, finding the opportunities first i mean it was primarily in it uh and and i don't know how much dominic went into this uh because that's all i know is engineering and it i mean there's staff augmentation where guys just need somebody a hand for three months or four months but the more lucrative pieces are finding mid-sized companies or even large companies that want to do a project uh, and crafting that project towards as close to staff augmentation as you can get it, even though speaking to deliverables a little bit. And, and, okay, and can, you, can you kind of ex expand on that when you say project and um, deliverable, like, like what, can you give us an example? So, uh, Hey, I don't want to have a, I don't want to have a, uh, we, we don't have the budget to hire a, a, a full-time employee. So we're going to hire a contractor and they're going to go in and they're just going to do the work this employee would do. Uh, he's a coder, he's a programmer, he's a project manager, call it whatever. Right. And so, so they bring him on from a staff augmentation standpoint. That's not really a project. That's, that's, I mean, those are great because it's set it and forget it. You don't manage that person. You don't do really anything except collect checks after you do the recruiting and get them in there. Uh, yeah. A project based is, is what, and, and let me let me jump off a little bit here saying we're all recruiters here uh the difference between i've always Except said <laughs> is uh uh i mean you you see these technology consulting companies or engineering consulting companies and and the way most of those guys start is it's a, it's a sales guy and it's a guy that that is a technologist or, or an engineering person and they go out and find these these projects right or these companies that's saying Hey, we want to implement Oracle, or we need to we need to do a deep dive into this uh, system, and 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 we want to carve out a section and, and and do some custom development. That that that's more of a project, uh, and and so you know there'd be a discovery phase, there would be a a implementation phase. I mean, different phases around that, but it, but it also comes out of a different pot of money too. It's coming out of their uh, I want to say it's coming out of their capex yeah well I, I i'm not as well versed on that as i should be but uh they're able to spend money differently that way but that's so more of a be, we would actually yeah, consult with them and say we're gonna it looks like you want to trim 500 trees right so we need to get and figure out a way we can find you 50 guys who are in these areas to trim the trees this is how we're going to go about it so you consult with them you put the project together and then you fulfill the project yeah. So, so, so if you're, if you got a technologist on the staff, right. And, and the sales guy, that's exactly what they do and they can't fill it. So they come to recruiters to do that. And, and then they find a way where we always as independents would assume all the risk and make very little margin. Uh, I mean, I've always said the difference between a consultant and a contractor is about a hundred dollars margin because <laughs> these guys go in and get $350 an hour for somebody. And then they'll come to you and say, hey, we've only, I mean, it's $150 an hour and you've got to pay the guy $100 an hour, right? I mean, and, and, and I'm, it's different amounts, but it scales down that way. Uh, the best the best way is really for, to have a relationship with that hiring manager or with that, that, uh, that division head or, you know, they've got to figure out how to get this done. They don't know how to recruit. They might not, I mean, one of the advantages of smaller firms, right, is, they're going to do all the the technology work. Hey, Jeff, I need a project manager, and then he's going to bring in these three other people, you know. But you have to you have to payroll them. You have to you have to find them for me. You have to do this, and 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 you know 
then you kind of craft it that way. Uh, oh, so you have the project manager and the three guys that works underneath the project manager. Right. I mean, it, it, it could be something that simple. It could be something as, as simple as finding an architect and, and having, I mean, having the conversation with the hiring manager around that and says, hey, look, we're going to find the architect and they're going to come in and work with you and they're going to build out this project. But we really want to make sure we staff this through them or, you know, staff this underneath them. Perfect, Jeff. That's fine. And then it's just a matter of writing up the, the statement of work in a way that protects you as much as possible, but also gives him what he needs. Does that make any uh-huh. sense? Yeah, no, it does. And I, I looked at it more of like, you know, X, Y, Z calls where we call X, Y, Z. They say, yeah, we need, we need three bottle washers and we go out and get three temp bottle washers for a six month contract. But you're kind of piggybacking more like what Accenture, Booz Allen Hamilton or one of those companies might do in terms of coming in, consulting with them, putting the project together and then saying, okay, it looks like you need to, to, start a bottle washing division. So you're going to need a, mo- a bottle washing project manager and three bottle washers underneath of them. We're going to get the project manager and we're going to help him staff all three of the um, bottle washers and we're going to payroll all that for you and then charge you one fee. Yeah. yeah. Let, yeah. Let, let's, let me, let me. Ask oh, there, there's so many different exa- ways that you can do this. Exactly. Yeah. Just saying one of the ways, right? Like one of them is our client needed a you know, warehouse needed to unbox these automotive parts. So they hired, you know, temps for 90 days, right? And we just build them for 90 days straight. And that Wait, you you look at it, you kind of look at it like say you have a candidate you submit to an employee, uh, a candidate you submit to a client. The client says, I don't know. I don't know if I, this guy is something about him, maybe yes. And usually you just kind of you're there. If you have a contract portion of it, you could say, why don't we put them on a contract? Give him a three month run. Working interview. And working interview. You don't, yeah. you know, you're not responsible for him. He works and he does it. And and uh, if it works out, then then we bring him on board. In the meantime, you know, we'll we'll set it up. And you can treat that's him like though, a kid. Ernie, that's though if if the candidate you have is a unemployed, right? Or willing to work on contract to, to take that chance. Yeah. We couldn't recruit a guy, you know, who's a maintenance director. And get them in with a client and be like, oh, well, you tell the maintenance guy, they're not really sure about you. They're going to bring you on for three months. And so quit your permanent right. job. So those are the ones that that's what's a struggle for me because I don't have any unemployed people mostly. Like this one uh, financial job, which I usually don't do, I got a bunch of guys, you know, 80 applications, but I don't know any, I don't even think about finance. But you're looking, you're looking sometimes at supervisors that are looking or somebody you know that calls you up and say, I'm looking for a shot. And and you that that's is a good probably, point. Yeah. That's that's the that's the easy way. And say, so let me just go see. You know, I can and, and everybody's always looking for supervisors. Supervisors go come they come and go. You know, the, yeah, that's yeah. that's a sweet yeah. spot. And if you look at it like a pyramid, you got your vice president, you got your director, you got your managers, and then you got a slew of supervisors. I mean, that's where the money is right there in terms of yeah. You know, they got ten supervisors to one manager. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, how I ended up. Here's another that example. Scenario. We had, we had a, a company that does uh, marketing for the OEMs here, the Ford and GM and Chrysler and all them. They needed a dot uh, net developer for a project. So they we had them on our payroll at $60 an hour. We paid them and we billed them what, AK90? 90. 90. And I never even talked to the guy one time. Literally just. Just like Jeff said, set it and forget it. Like I just build out every week, no, no problems. Now, when you go to the lower end, like light industrials, like uh, lower end skilled trades like CNC, you're going to be dealing with a lot of issues. So it's a whole other animal. You're dealing with, you know, my car won't start. Uh, can you front me? I got stoned yesterday. Can't pass a drug test. Yeah. <laughs> can you, or I can just you don't show up. Yes. So yeah, it's, it, we've heard every excuse in the book. I've heard, you know, 10 family members dying in one week. You know, you, you hear it all. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and mom dies all every time, every week. <laughs> it's it's part Mason, of the game. are you ready? <laughs> Mason's ready, guys. So for those showing up late, Mason has developed a an AI that for temp staffing, for applications, you, you have a search that's got tons and tons of applications, right? You have 100 applications. He's got an AI that will call them and screen them for you to get them to the next level. And he's going to show us that uh, today. Yeah, let me, uh, so I can show you what it looks like. Um, Let's 
All right. So the, the way I made this was I just pasted in a job description into here. Um, but that takes a second, so I won't won't bore you with that. But basically, it comes up with this script that I'm going to say, and it comes up with these like questions that I want the answer to. So this was an advanced senior AI research scientist at Accenture. Ah. Okay, so the consultants you're talking about. Speaking of which. <laughs> yeah, 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 I was going to say. I wonder how much this person is going to make. Um, so, yeah, basically, you know, you, you can edit this information, but I don't think that's too exciting right now. I think the exciting part is I'll just have it call me. Um, it's Alex from Highland Search. How's your day going? Hey, Alex. Uh, it's, it's going well. Awesome, I'm glad to hear that. I'm reaching out about an exciting opportunity that I think you might be interested in. Do you have a couple of minutes to chat about it? Sure, I guess. Perfect. By the way, a few people have told me that the audio is a bit laggy today, so if I cut you off or if there's like a, like a, a bit of a delay, I apologize for that in advance. But yeah, anyways, I'm curious, what's your background in AI and machine learning? Have you worked with neural network models or deep learning models before? Uh, yeah, I got a you know undergrad and master's from Stanford. I worked in self-driving. Um, I've trained that many, many models. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, that sounds interesting. And how about foundation models like LMS and multimodal models? Have you had a chance to work on those? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've done some fine tuning of them, made my own custom ones, made some audio models. Nice. So it sounds like you've been in the AI space for a while. How familiar are you with different technologies and modalities in generative AI? Um, I know, you know, audio and text and some vision stuff. Is that kind of what you're looking for? Definitely. That's really relevant experience. I'm glad to hear you've worked across different AI modalities like audio, text, and vision. That's super valuable. And how about GPU architecture and computer architecture? Right, I'm just going to end it there so I don't bore you through, a, yeah, through the whole so, call. So my uh, question would have been, if you said no, does she? Because it sounded like when you said one thing, she recognized that and added something to it that wasn't in the script. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she, it like you know, the script is more of like a here's a template to follow. Here's a here's boilerplate. You know, here's this here's like guidance. But the way I think about it is is imagine you were using like a probably outsourced, you know, call shop and you said, here's what to follow. You know, if, if someone says, if you ask them like, how's, how's your day going? Or, you know, you ask them, what's your experience with LLMs? And they say, my favorite color is blue. They're like, that's cool. My favorite color is purple, but you know, how, what's your experience with, yeah. with LLMs? Um, and, you know, whenever I get a text, I ask them to say banana. And if they can't say banana, I know it's a, a buy. <laughs> Wait, Mason, how does it respond to someone who might ramble? Because we do talk to candidates who you ask them a question and they tell you their whole life story. I've never had a candidate do that. <laughs> <laughs> Ernie, you're not making enough calls. <laughs> um, I, I can tell you she's she's much more patient than I am. Um, she listens. She says, she's oh, trying that's to interrupt you on one of the questions. Is that because you paused or? Or just because it, it was the way that it works. Yeah, um, that can be for like a variety of reasons. Sometimes it's if I pause for a while, um, that's still something you know I'm, I'm working on, and that's like probably honestly the the biggest failure. Well, not failure case. Like she then stops talking immediately if I keep going. But um, okay. you know that, that interruption is kind of like a balance of you don't want to wait too long after I finish talking, um, but you also want to you know, not interrupt people. So that's something we're like working on some some interesting techniques there. I don't want to, you know, because this recording, don't want to share exactly what's going on, but um, something that will hopefully fix that. It'd be interesting too, like I see it more when we're talking about the applications, like, hey, is this Steve? Yes, it is. Okay, great. You apply to a job, XYZ job. I have I know you're busy. I'll be brief. Here are five or six quick questions. Can you answer them for me? Yes, I can. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. He answers it. Okay, next. Blah, blah. Like, you don't even really have to um, have it 
do any of that if the guy is willing to just answer those questions because you said, look, I'm busy, you're busy, this yep. is real brief, so we can move the night. That's like kind of cool. Uh, Steve, you got a question? Yeah. Hey, Mason. Hey, um, Steve. Hey, I'm, I'm one of the – I was an engineer for 15 years for crossing over to the dark side. <laughs> um, how, and, how is it? <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk. You and yeah, I, I know people. <laughs> Question: I'm serious now. Which, which, which LLM or LLMs are behind this? Yeah, it's it's a mix of uh, OpenAI and Anthropic. Um, so, okay. mix you, of have, things. Have you have you looked at Mixtral, Facebook's? Yeah, I, I I've used Mix, Mixtral. Um, there's a chance I switch some stuff to that, and particularly a fine-tuned version of that. Yes. Which, yeah. And the reason I say is it's um, you know it's it's kind of like from a everyone here from recruiting if you're doing sourcing, if you stick if you simply use one browser to do your sourcing, you're going to mix miss yeah. a ton. And of course, the hybridization is what I'm really interested in because that allows you to you know you know you know, again you, you set your flags for delays. Mm -hmm. that's, that's that's we know that's that's behind it. This is this is um, very promising. Can, yeah, I'm actually more Mason, impressed than I thought it was going to be. Mason, <laughs> can you set it up to, like, sometimes when I'm talking to candidates, I'll say, look, hey, I just want you to know right off the bat, I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions. I'll get down to talking to you later on to see if you qualify. But I, I have a lot of questions right now. But also I'll be pausing here and there because I'm writing stuff down, so I apologize for that. Mm -hmm. Could you do something like that at the beginning or however you qualify it? Yeah, so this is all, this is just a text field. So I could be like, I could delete this whole thing and have it just start by saying, hey, Ernie, like, you know, I love I love that painting behind you. And it could, I could change it to that. Um, so if you say, hey, I don't want it to start like this, I could say, hey, it's Alex, uh, Highland Search, you know, so, I thought you'd be a great fit for blah, blah, blah. So, so you write that down and then it throws it into the second part, the question part? No, so these are... Yeah, I know it's a little bit confusing. I'll be honest. Engineer, I think I'm pretty good engineer, not a good designer. Um, and I know that. Uh, no, I'm slow. <laughs> what's your report look like after the calls? Yeah, so basically, uh, okay, wait, sorry. First, I'll, I'm going to answer the, the, the question thing, and then I'll, I'll get to that one sec. Basically, these are separate, um, but so it's very related. So these questions were automatically extracted from when I uploaded the job description. But again, these I could change to be like, you know, do you ha have U.S. secret security clearance? Now, these are not actually asked to the candidates. This is like the summary you get afterwards. Um, so anything you put in here, this is like said to the candidates. Um, there's also a, a way you can give it background information or, or information on what you want it to text people if they don't answer. Um, this is for your summary usage. So after a call, you'll get these this summary information filled out. And that's done. You upload all the people you want to call. It calls them all and then gives you this summary. So, you know, for Ernie, it'll give me here are the answers to everything. It'll give me the transcript. It'll give me the recording, et cetera. So I have I have ten people on my list to call using this. I don't call anybody. I just have this mechanism call. And it calls and you just get the results. You can read the transcript, listen to it if you want. But yeah, I go to I go to the bank. <laughs> well, you know, the, the interesting thing about this, um, this, 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 did Stacy just raise her hand? You're on, oh. Stevie. Okay, good. Um, behind the scene. Um, uh, Mason, have, have you um, played with Otter AI yet? Um, the last company I worked at used it for sales sales calls, like recording them. Yeah, Isn't it's Otter actually, on the call. I what? have Otter. Uh, I have Otter on the call. Teams. Yeah, and so yeah, and Otter doesn't have an op open API. I'm, I'm I'm guessing some of your code's written in Python or something of that. Mm -hmm. There's um um. There's, there's, the, the, Otter doesn't have an open API because you know, you know, we're, the, the, to answer some of the questions, with an open API, you could port that stuff over, and then come up with a synopsis mm -hmm. of everything, and yeah. um, and so it's it's just just for this. If if in case you may want to take a look at this, I have not played with it. I'm putting it mm -hmm. in the chat. 
but uh, we're, we're going to see more and more things like this, as you, as you, as you know. Which this is kind of cool because you could have um, MetaView on the call while this is happening. Yes. So, and exactly. MetaView would absolutely give you a synopsis too. That's kind of actually not a bad idea, Steve. Well, that's the same thing, uh, you know, uh, Tom. It's like any any of these, and and there's they're, they're, right now they're AI ish. This is not this is not yeah. AI fully, but mm -hmm. they, um, the the first person whoever comes up with open with an open AI for this for these things. And finds a way to monetize it is is going to do much better than anybody else. So anything, whether it's MetaView, you know, if if, if uses, we say, look, with an open AI, you're going to lock me in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mason. Any idea? Nobody's going to hold you to it if you don't want it. It's fine. Like price point. Um. Yeah. Still. Still. Kind of figuring that out right now. You know, just trying to have usage it's going to be priced on either like a per connected call or per minute it's on the phone basis um i can tell you this it'll be it'll be cheaper than any american you can find and probably on par uh, <laughs> with what i have to pay a, um somebody from india or the philippines to do the same thing yeah it, it's Mason. probably on par with that or, or cheaper like obviously unlike them this is going to reduce in cost like twice every year so um <laughs> Tell them about your tell them about your buddy from Stanford that started that company that literally takes the Indian like that that was mind blowing to me. Yeah, yeah. So I, I've got a buddy that started a company um, that basically takes like similar technology, but takes an accent and removes it. And you know the kind of the largest use case of that is you have people in India calling people in America. The people in America, you know, either can't understand them or are like you know let me speak to the american type of thing um and so it just like removes that accent um and makes them sound it works neutral or yeah i mean when it first yeah. came out it was you know it kind of just made it sound you didn't sound you could tell it wasn't a robot you couldn't tell where they were from and so like the honestly the people in india liked it because they were like i was no longer getting you know it just you sounded weird. Now I think it it sounds pretty good. Um, is that, but that, isn't that a voice changer? I mean, voice changers have been around for a while. I used to prank my friends and pretend I was a girl and tell them funny stuff. <laughs> what changed? Yeah. So this is. <laughs> I, I think the big thing here is it's uh it's like fifty or hundred millisecond latency. Um, okay. And so that's they're also you know sense. dialects are really hard to tease out because you, you you literally have to have to pull apart the mm -hmm. waveform and then and then add, and change it and then put it back together mm -hmm. that's hard so hey, I, could sound, I could sound like a white guy then is this gonna, is this gonna <laughs> sound like scotty scotty ai are you familiar uh, with i'm not familiar what's that scotty ai i, I don't think i've seen them it's before. uh it's it's a recruiting it's a recruiting uh it does exactly what we're talking about uh but it's more prevalent in the uh in europe I'll have to check them out. Um, yeah, it's very interesting. And and I know earlier you guys were mentioning the the summary. So kind of, you know, what what would you like there? Because I'm I'm looking for feedback too on like you know what's the stuff you need there. So you want a summary of like how did the call go or what kind of information? Yeah. Mason, I'll, I'll, if anybody has, I'll share you uh, uh, an example from Otter AI. I'll send it over to you. Yeah, I, I can screen share and show you the most recent one we did with MetaView. What yeah. so what MetaView does when I have a conversation with a candidate? And here, I'll, I'll I'll show you if I can pull it up. Um, when I have a conversation with a candidate, right? MetaView listens to the whole call. And and the one I used was I was interviewing a guy for a, uh, a lead position, and I was taking care of my horses. And the call was at seven o'clock, and I couldn't get back to the office, so I called through MetaView, and it listened to the entire call, and then put together a absolutely fantastic summary that i was able to then copy and paste and send to my client right mm -hmm. so my thought was and, and what um uh um steve was saying is if it if you if this is set up and then men of you or otter or whoever is listening to the call you're going to get that same um synopsis mm -hmm. right so uh and here i'll show let me share my screen mason didn't i have a um uh didn't I have that yesterday at the end of the call? Yeah, so it'll give you all of these things here. It will tell you 
you know, what they said to those. Um, so if you know kind of ahead of time, hey, I need someone to have five years of experience, you can put that in here on the right side and it will tell you that. Um, but it's interesting, so this kind of sounds like maybe what you want is like the summary that you can then send to the hiring manager of like- Yeah, so that's it. So here's the entire transcript on the right-hand side of our call. Oh, and here, then so it pulls together the topic highlights. Like he has experience in managing large projects. He's been involved in office transition. Like his leadership is revenue been modeling. And what, what Meta does is it listens to what I asked and sees what we were talking about and in their opinion, what's the most most important, right? So his experience, his leadership, Revit and BIM modeling, his project work, and then any questions he had, and then what the follow-up was at the end of our call. So I mm -hmm. sent um, everything for, except for the follow-up to my client going, hey, I talked to this guy. Here are the notes from our interview. Yeah. And this is a client of mine I've had forever. In fact, I knew him before he was a client. He was a candidate. He goes, you didn't write this. There's no way you wrote this. <laughs> I was like, where the hell did this come from? Right? So... It, and, it, and it remembers stuff that I wouldn't even have thought, right? So mm -hmm. the stuff where it says Garrett has experience with BIM modeling, typically of a level development of LOD of 300 and projects at LOD of 400, I wouldn't even have thought to write that down. That, mm -hmm. to me, doesn't mean anything. But Jeff even commented on that, that that was a good thing. So what MetaView and Otter and all the other ones do is that's what they do. They like listen to the call and put this synopsis together so in my mind with yours, right? So they would listen to the call and then we could have a synopsis of each call and say, you know, go forward with this guy, don't go with this guy, go with this guy, don't, you know, because you could see it and you could even do a too long don't read, right? And which is even easier to pick three topics, mm -hmm. structural engineering experience, then modeling and um, project management, right? And then it'll generate mm -hmm. a too long don't read. So even make it shorter, right? So you don't have wow. to read all that stuff. Yeah, that's awesome. That, yeah. And then you have an assistant on over here. I could ask it questions about the actual interview. So if it's a much longer interview, I could ask it questions about the interview. And then it gives me the information of the interview. Who me has a question? Oh, you said that's free? No, no, no. That's um I'm on the trial. I have five free conversations left. Um and I do this all the time. So if you guys want a free trial, you get, I think, 20 conversations, and I get five more if you all sign up using my my link. So here's my link. Yeah, and I saw, Jeff, I saw Scotty Technologies. I was on there, and it looks like it was the same thing that Mason was talking about. It gets rid of the accents and everything. It does, yeah, it, um, it counts as languages, but it, uh, it's got an AI that interacts uh, from a, it looks like it's more of, of a staffing uh, lower level piece, but I mean, it does interviews, it does scheduling, and, and it's also usage based, right? Just like what you were saying, because that's, that's where they get you. 25 cents a minute, uh, and then oh, 15 geez. cents per text, and a 10,000 uh, a month or a year, a year. So 10,000 what a year? 10, well, 10,000 euro a year. Oh, and for then, Scotty? Holy, a plus 25 cents a minute? Yep. Oh, but it's and it's and and it's a volume play, right? Because I mean, as these get better, it's great. But even Mason, what you were showing us, and and I've I, I've seen some of that as well. If the pauses aren't that perfect, okay, but extrapolate that out over ten thousand calls, and yeah. and guess what? That that lady that was talking, or if the guy's talking, they don't get their feelings hurt. They get they're just fine, and then you can start tweaking things based on the feedback you get from the script that comes back in. Oh, I like that it yeah. said, call me lag. That was smart. Tell, tell us, before, you, before you guys stop, Pumi had a question. He has a hand raised, and he's, it's been a while. I'm sorry. I didn't see it. Go ahead. Yeah, not a problem. Yeah, it's uh, Pumi. Um, so one, one question I have, Tom, is that uh, when you're using uh, these you know, different technologies, regardless of uh, which one, are you disclosing to the candidate up front that uh, they're being recorded? Yes, you have to, unless you're in a one-party state. Right. And it's better okay, to do I, I assume so. And uh, I just wanted to kind of confirm are there uh, any instances, you know, how do you handle the instances where people just say, yeah, I don't want to do that? Then you're able to turn it off immediately? Yeah, you just turn yeah. it off. And I have okay. not, uh, this I just started using MetaView, right? So, and, and, all, and really what most of them are is for Zoom video calls, right? That's, but a lot of them work on, 
MetaView is the only one I've seen that works on an actual phone call where it listens to the whole phone call, right? Mm -hmm. The rest, I don't know what Otter does, but uh, yeah. the other ones, like I have another one that I had on here. I can't remember the name um, that, that Kelly turned me on to that it's just for video, right? It, it, it works with Zoom. It works with Google Meet. It works with Teams and it listens to So they can see it, right? Like, so right now we're on this call. Dominic's Otter might still be on here. I don't know. So it's yeah, I'll, Dominic's Otter I'll pilot, right? Yeah, it's right there. I'll send it's, it's, to you guys. Yeah. I'll send it after. It's cool. Yeah, and it's it's listening to this whole, whole entire conversation. So if you're on a Zoom call, and any and in and, and also like this is streamed on yeah. the internet. So really, it, it really what it comes down to is okay. if you're in a one party state, you can use MetaView, and no one. I do. I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Steve, Steve, uh, you okay. Gotta you, you maybe you gotta to turn it on and off, like on demand. Then. Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, you can absolutely okay. stop it. All right. If you cool. do use right Otter, be careful that you don't auto join because I have clients that do not want it in the in the calls and it auto joins. So you got to be careful. Yeah. And you can set that up in the settings. How do you use it on phone calls? Do you have to uh, yeah. like call a certain or call to a different number or does it? Yeah, but it does not okay. recognize that. So you call this four one five number and hit pound. Or no, I'm sorry. You call the four one five number. It recognizes my registered number. And yeah. then it says dial the candidate's number, hit pound. So you dial five 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 one two one two, hit pound, and then it connects. And yeah. when it connects, it shows your phone number, my oh. my connected number. So they have no idea that I'm even calling from MetaView. Wow, that's cool. I like that. So if I you're like in that. Arkansas, Delaware, Maryland, California, Florida, yeah. Massachusetts, Connecticut, Illinois, and Michigan, they're one party consent states. So if you're talking, if you're in that state and talking to somebody in that state, you can use MetaView. No questions asked. Like if I'm talking to somebody in Maryland and I'm in Maryland, I don't need to tell them. But if you're if you're calling, if you're from Illinois, which you could do that, and I'm talking to somebody in Texas, you have to disclose. I have to disclose. Correct. Oh. And, now, yeah, and then I don't party. know if it's the but other way around. Party and I'm the one party. I like that. I don't know. I I, I, like know, I, 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 I like don't think that. I need yeah. to disclose since I'm the one yeah. party. Pimp them out. I don't know. I like um, that. Yep, I like that. I like, like that. Steve, Steve, we know you like it. You need to get us off. He's not listening. So, to and they wouldn't Steve have to Levy? worry about. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll mute him, guys. Don't worry. So, <laughs> so, is he talking to us or is he on the phone? He, he's. I think oh. he's. He's something else. He made it now. Ordering some ice cream or something. I don't know. He likes it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I, I I thought he was talking. Like, Steve, are you talking? He's talking on the phone. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so it's not us. So yeah, so I I mean I have the a, a thing here from uh, Mythis and Wickert and Lur attorneys at law. Laws are recording in all fifty states. I'll go through it, but I do know that there are you know uh, one two three four five six seven eight eleven states that you don't need to have consent. So that I don't know if that goes across lines. In fact, mm -hmm. the the previous administration. When the call was recorded and one of those states was georgia the other state was florida and they were trying to get it thrown out and they didn't and i don't know which way it went for that one party well i i just re i just remember uh what's her name trisha the re the trainer trish mm -hmm. she said that if you're in one of those states all you need is just one person to and you're the one person that's mm -hmm. sending it out if you're in that state so mm -hmm. but the other part is the other part is if you want to be up front, you just ask him, hey, are you, uh, look, I'm recording this. Is this okay with you? Or you can just start the conversation. Hey, how are you? Hey, look, I take notes, but I'm really slow in writing, but I want to get all the information from you. Could I please record you? And they may say yes. And then if they say no, then you just turn it off. But you have it on the record that you recorded them. And then you'd say, hey, I'm recording you. I just say, I have your permission to record. And they go, yes, you do. So, you know. Yeah, this is weird. So uh, I, I got a, an updated list. And it now says that there's more one-party consent than two-party consents. Interesting. So the strong recruiter, recruiter lobby. And it says stuff <laughs> like um, one party for electronic, two party for in-person. Rhode Island, although consent is not required when the recorded parties do not have a reason to expect privacy. 
one party only if the recording party is participant in the conversation or as has consent of one of the participants in the conversation. A lot of the two party consent is for face to face. Like we're we're at a bar, right? That and over the phone is different. So <laughs> interesting. It's to pick up your you get your pickup lines recorded. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because I, I, yeah, this is interesting. I'm going to look deeper into that. And that was a good question for me. But yeah, I tell people, yeah, that, uh, like I use, this calls being recorded for quality assurance purposes, right? Like it's all you need to say and not tell them that it's, you know, because you can't take notes like me. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. If you were to have a conversation and you use an obscenity, does it record that? Or does it just? Oh, MetaView does not. So in the MetaView, con my first MetaView conversation was with my son, and I asked him, I wanted to see what it do, and I asked him, I said, I go on Facebook and social media and check out my candidates. I understand that you're having an affair with David Beckham. Is that still going on? It did not put that in the MetaView interview. Well, is he? No, just kidding. <laughs> so it was <laughs> interesting that certain things that they deem not relevant does not show up in the call. Interesting. So I don't know about the cussing, and it'd be interesting because I cuss like a sailor sometimes if that would come up in the call or it would just have like when I sometimes on some of my uh, stuff that I use to transcribe, it'll just put four dots, right? It won't put the actual, it'll be like, you stupid dot, 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 dot. How could you do that, right? So it, I think it, I, it'd be interesting to see what MetaView, uh, anybody use Otter? Does it, does it, does it transcribe everything, including yeah. curse words? Um. I don't know. I gotta. Well, I, I, so hey, Otter, you fucking stupid idiot, asshole, motherfucker. <laughs> are you recording this conversation? We want to know what's going on. I guess we'll see. Let me see. <laughs> I had you on mute. I had you on mute because I like to hear those words. Tom, is that the best you could uh, come up with? <laughs> on a quick. <laughs> uh, he was a bartender before. He knows all of them. So. Um, uh, any You're gonna more get questions bad, for Mason and then any more questions about temp or contractors? Does anybody want to add anything that Jeff and Dominic and Craig had mentioned about temp and contract staffing? Because that that was what you know we had this meeting for and what I'm really interested in because of what we're trying to build you know alongside this business. I'll throw, throw one thing and maybe got covered uh, before I joined, but uh, one thing, so I actually use a couple of different um, uh, EOR is simply because some will provide sponsorship and others will not. And that's oh, a big deal. That. That's a big deal for me because uh, I do a lot of, uh, for example, robot programmers, controls, engineers, things like that. And I will have, can, you know, a lot of TN visa candidates, which is pretty simple. But again, uh, some will do it, some won't. And um, so if you're bringing in some from Mexico or Canada, that certainly, uh, you know, comes into play. And and did they already have um, all right, like H2B visa spots like open for you? Like or like how how do, how do they have that sponsorship ability? Well, with the TN visas, again, with the NAFTA agreements, yeah, uh, yeah. all we're really doing is just doing a TN transfer. Okay. Um, yeah. Pretty much no one, at least with the majority of my clients, pretty much no one's going to do a contract H one B transfer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. It, it and it, regardless of the cost, it's the time that it takes to get it done. So it uh, it just if they're going to bring someone in contract, they literally want them to be able to start within a week or two. Um, so a couple of weeks to get something done, not a big deal, but anything beyond that, there, there's really no interest. What about yeah. H-1B visas that they already have? Like I, I've actually placed some candidates who were working at XYZ, they had an H-1B visa and we transferred it to my client. Is that something that can be done on the temp contract side? So again, the issue is even to do a H-1B transfer, the amount of time that it takes to get the done. You can do it if you can find some, but again, it becomes just, it's really not just a cost issue, it's a time issue. Um, even expediting an H-1B transfer, the earliest I've ever had it done is probably three, three and a half weeks, and that's paying the expediting fee. So again, most of the- Can they start before it's transferred? They won't do it. No. No, no. from what I heard, they can't start. 
That's uh, what I've heard. I don't know, though. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but, Say but, again, Tom, I, did, I didn't hear you. No, you can't. You can't, yeah, you can't, can't. start before. No, okay. What about the ones oh, where the college grads have that visa where they tell me, why well, can work three years in the States without sponsorship? What visa is that? And is that uh, that's a student visa? Is you can extend it TN, or there are different lengths that they can get as well, and they have to apply for that up front. Okay. So if, even with the TN visas, uh, they can apply for, like, I've got a guy working right now, um, and I think he got a five year approved. So all, even if he changes employers, uh, all you have to do is just basically, and again, it, there are differences even between Canada and Mexico because sometimes they'll have to go back to Mexico, like actually fly back in and then cross the border again. Um, and in other cases, like in Canada, usually you just show up at the immigration office, you just show up there on either side and they take care of it. That's what I heard about so, Canada. It was relatively easy is that, that they all have to do every six months or year or whatever it is and show up and say, hey, I'm still working at XYZ and, and it gets approved. Uh, well, and changing. Changing. It's nice, too. There's so many entry points um, where you can come with me being in Metro Detroit area. We've got, um, you know, they can come through Port Huron or Detroit. And uh, it, again, it's relatively simple. So, OK. I want to say there's an OPT to OPT F1 to H1B as well. OPT, that's the one I was talking about. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. That was the one that I'll get because I'll I'll say I put on some of the the stuff like my, like stage like hey do you, do you need sponsorship and they'll say no and then when I get on the phone with them well I need sponsorship I'm on an OPT I need sponsorship in three years or five whatever the, the exactly. term is and my clients yeah, well, don't want anything to do with that because that means that in three years. It could be a ton of money or they can't get sponsorship. So for right. a perm placement, I, I can't do that. But on contract, that would be no problem, right? Yeah, for contract, it's not an issue at all. Uh, with an OPT visa, they're basically just, uh, they're getting a letter from their school for that. Um, but the problem is exactly what you said, is that, uh, and again, depending on their degree and everything will uh, determine how long they can be on the OPT for uh, up to like usually 29 months, I believe, depending on their degree. But the, the issue is at the end, they need a new H-1B. Uh, so it's not an H-1B spot transfer, it's a new H-1B and pretty much no one wants to deal with that right now. I talked to right. a guy from a company in Illinois that was on a, he'd been on the H-1B V sponsor visa for like 12 years, still hasn't got um, his green anything card. to do with that. Yeah, yeah. He, he still can't get his green card. He still can't. And it's, it's it's he was like, man, I'm so frustrated. I don't think I'll ever get it. A lot of those rules have changed. It takes forever now. It, it, yeah. it, Sometimes Even before it depends you on your attorney too, right? I mean, it's it, it's a it's a lottery every year, and and and, and even though they move through the process, and some some people, each like, each country has a different a lot of numbers yeah. that they allow, yeah. and and then and, and before, if you were married to a U.S. citizen, it would just like come right over. Now, you got to go back to your country. And my brother's wife, she's from Pakistan, lived in Canada for four years before they could get her into the country. He had to go see her. They were married, everything, and he had to go up and see her every every month. He would go and see her in Canada because she couldn't get in here because she was from one of the, you know, it was during, you know, after 9-11, but before, I don't even know when, and yeah, they wouldn't let her in. It, it, it was, a, he had so much stuff he had to do to get her in here. Yeah, it's not, it's not what it used to be. Yeah, because I've done people from Iran, Iraq, Japan, China, um, Ukraine. I mean, I've done a bunch over the 20 years I've been doing it, and it's gotten progressively harder every year. 25 years ago, 20 years ago, companies like, yeah, they would send me a letter. I'd have to sign a letter saying that we did a thorough search and couldn't find any Americans to fill the job, and then boom, they would get the H-1B visa. Now it's like insane. Yeah, so again, uh, you know, my biggest piece of advice on the contract side is make sure the whatever employer record you're using, uh, make sure they can do it. So it, uh, you know, that's important because 
every now and then, you know, a project comes up and, you know, a client wants to move quickly and then you find out that your EOR doesn't have that capability. So again, that's why I've got at, at least two that I work with. You know, I don't, I don't know that I necessarily need to have three or four, but I, I have one that will, oh, here was the other thing too. One of the ones that I use provides really good benefits. I make a little less money uh, with that one. But for the contractors that absolutely require benefits, you know, paid vacation, holidays, medical, vision, dental, all of that, um, you know, that's a good option to throw out there as well. That's pretty good. That is that's really interesting. Bad. I, I didn't even that's think that about that, but it could be an issue of, hey, well, fine, you need this benefits, we can get it with this, and we'll take a little bit less just to be able to get that guy in place. That's not actually a bad, bad idea. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, in that case, they're almost like a direct, and their benefits start uh, within 30 days too. So it's not like they're waiting 60 or 90 days. And you know that's a problem when it's a six-month contract. You know they 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 need it to go over. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know they need them to start pretty quick. So you might yeah, that's why to work with a couple. Yeah, who is that company? Or do you mind sharing that? Yeah, the one that I use uh, primarily is called uh, Alianza. It's uh, A L L E A N Z A. They're based out of uh, Connecticut. And do I you can have get their, everyone. You have their link. You can put the link on the on the. Chat you know, I don't have it handy, but um, I don't know. I'm looking it up right now. To you and. Uh, so look, the deal is Alianza is actually the company I deal with. They um, funded by a different company called ESSG. And that company is based out of uh, Minneapolis. But I, I would have to find uh, the contact info for them. Is it Alianza I, Professional Services? I think it's Alianza Partners out of uh, Connecticut. Let me see if I can okay. find it real quick. Yeah, here it is. Gotcha. Oh, got it. Yep. Alianza World Partners. Yeah, and then oh, the other the one. Insurance. Okay. They're an insurance provider as less than an EO uh, employee record, not, I mean, a, a back office one, right? Yeah, there's actually, let me just. Uh... Well, what I'll do is I'll uh, try to. I can uh, send it to you, and then maybe you can. Uh, yeah, yeah, send it to group. me, and I'll just put it in the in the notes in the um, the video when it's up on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. It's, the funny thing is, I found out about them because they actually years ago, uh, basically, they did a partnership with the applicant tracking system company that I use. I I use a platform called XLR. And uh, they were providing services to uh, XLR's parent company. That's how I found out about them. And uh, at one time, they were looking at uh, integrating their um, their back end with my ATFs. And uh, so I, I've kind of used them quite a few times over the years. And then uh, one, of, one of the other ones that I looked into, and I don't even know what they're called now, but... Um, used to be affiliated with top echelon and i forgot what they're called now but um they third process oh the one new, that works for that's fox hire is that what what that is now yeah that sounds yeah. right yeah. they had a really really convoluted onboarding process they made it so difficult that um i'm just like nope i'm i want nothing to do with it even if i even if the margins were better, it, it was really, really difficult just to even get onboarded with them. <laughs> yeah, that's not anything I want to worry about. Like I said, uh, Dominic was talking earlier. I want the least amount of risk. I'll take less money if all I have to do is find the find the candidates and then let the back office staffing company handle everything from there. That's all I want to worry about. But it, it's yeah. also it's also nice that you have the benefits so on this one. Well, all of them. So does uh, so does boss Ernie. Ernie has he has you have to provide benefits if they're a W two employee. No, so but they all but, provide benefits. Yeah, but I'm saying some of them don't offer the benefits just for the 
because they're temp or whatever they, they want to call them. But the fact that to attract somebody, if you have benefits, that you could tell them, you know, as you make this transition, you this is a, this is a big plus for you. Then that's that's more attractive because somebody wants, you know, they got kids, they got whatever. They're looking at that. Okay. It's time to get Cobra. Yeah, but it, you, you see, and I, if I recall Cobra way back when, when you tell them to hang on, hang on to that money, put it aside. Because you got like, I guess it's like 90 days or something. You have to 90 days to yeah, so, actually so, sign up for it. So, so yeah, that, as long as you don't case, get hurt, you're good. Yeah, so don't sign up for it until until it's time. You need it. You need it. it otherwise, you go the 90 days, you don't go to any doctors, you keep your money. But if you if you want it right away and you do it right away, you're spending your money and you may not, it may just be money thrown out the window. Does everybody understand what he's saying? So, so real quick, and then they can go. So basically, if you have a company that says, "Look, uh, we our our benefits do start for sixty days, right?" and the candidate leaves, but he's afraid of losing his health insurance, right? I tell him to get the, get all the paperwork for Cobra, right? Cobra, you have nine days to sign up for Cobra from the day you resign from your job. You cannot be denied. You keep that paperwork all filled out, sitting there on your desk with a check and everything. As long as you don't need any health services between the time that you started with the bottle washing company and your benefits kick in, you won't need the Cobra. But if let's say you get sick or break your leg or whatever it is, you just send that stuff in and the Cobra is there, the medical, it's there. It doesn't matter that you got hurt and, and did it later. You have 90 days. But, but it's but it's important to know that you have to pay the full 90 days. So if it's on, on your third month, you got to go back and pay month yeah. one, month two, and month three. So correct. Yeah. So that's why you save Correct. your money, put it aside, and then send it to me. I'll hold it for you. <laughs> Will you say that? Pooby, quick, quick question for you, Pooby, if you're still in the staffing game. Like my buddy, he said, you know, if you have under fifty temps, you don't have to offer insurance. Is that still true? I think what it's he a company, was, isn't it? He started two different companies. He started another LLC, and then, you know, he just put him under that one once he got close to fifty. I think that's dependent on the state you're in. I have a friend who does that in Kentucky, um, and she's always real cognizant to stay under fifty contractors. But I think that's state dependent because she was looking to come yeah. to Ohio, and she wouldn't come to Ohio because of the way that's structured. But what about um, if the company itself has five hundred employees? You don't have to give benefits to the contractors. Or the temps? Yeah. You don't have to. You okay. just, I, if it's a higher end position though, they're they're probably gonna want it. Like but this dot net developer that I had, he didn't he didn't care. You know, his wife had it. So that's a lot of times if you can find good contractors that like their wife carries the insurance or whatever, or the husband carries the insurance. Well, if, you're using, if you're using a service like boss, isn't they aren't they the employer record employer of record? Yep. Yes. It would be whether or not they have more than five uh, hundred and fifty people. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Never think about that one. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly I was, what it I was is. only thinking of yeah, I was thinking about myself huh, when I did it. I, I did everything myself. And the that's family. actually a very good point, Nick. Yeah, you're right. That's why boss and all those offering because they all have three, four, five hundred, eight, a thousand, whatever it is, contract employees through twenty search firms. And yeah, that's a good point. What? In, in I know the US, they get a great deal. In, in it, the U.S., are you guys seeing what I'm seeing in Ontario? Is there's a lot of staffing agencies. There are some staffing agencies that are basically laundering money, and they're paying a lot of money under the table, but they're working for like not Fortune 500 firms, but pretty established firms. But so what do you mean? Like, so they'll pay me ten dollars an hour, but actually pay me fifteen an hour and give me five dollars an hour cash every week? They'll pay fifty percent of your pay in cash, so you don't have to. How do they it? even do that? They're doing it illegally. They're they're laundering money. So, <laughs> yeah, the same do. way someone here is on unemployment or disability is working at the the local roofing company, uh, you know, loading trucks, and he's getting cash every day. It's the same thing. Well, one of the other things that I've seen here, even in the States, is that uh, sometimes what uh, what they'll do, especially with a lot of the guys uh, in 
in Mexico, and it actually works to their advantage, though. But and I'm sure it's legal, but it's just another way to skirt taxes. Uh, they'll reduce the hourly rate down to like twenty or twenty-five an hour, whereas everyone else is getting fifty bucks an hour. But then they give them two hundred and fifty dollars a day per diem. Yeah. So it yeah uh, the it, per diem thing I've seen yeah. So the uh, from a tax perspective, it, but. It does end up hurting them a little bit too, simply because if it's a position where they're working a ton of overtime, you know, if they're working 80, 90 hours a week and they're relying on that overtime and they're only getting 25 bucks an hour, that's a lot different than when they're making 50 an hour. That's a very good point too. Yeah. I mean, these companies are putting out 400 temps and and they're paying half of their salaries under the table. Yeah. Because it, I mean, mean, how the hell do they track that? Like, my account would be like, "What the fuck are you doing? Who are all these people?" <laughs> you know. But you know, the, you know, the funny part is that's the only part you know about. <laughs> yeah. There's, not, there's, there's yeah, a whole right. lot more to it than that, man. Yeah. Well, and 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 these these firms they'll, they'll call me and they're like, "Hey, Kale, we need people," and I'm like, "Oh, well, I charge this much, and my payment terms are this much." They're like, "We got 90 day payment terms." I'm like, "Well." Good, yeah, good, good luck. luck. I mean, you you can get a TV pretty cheap at the parking lot at Best Buy too, but. <laughs> Uh, I'm in a different business, man. Hey guys, I got to take off. I just wanted to just say, yeah. Mason, thank you very much for coming on. And, yeah, all and of you, just, thank you very point, much. I just want to say too that if um, you know you, you're, I know you're not a recruiter, but the stuff you're teaching us is pretty cool. So you know, come on by. We'll all, we'll always be get, glad to give you uh, feedback. I mean, these guys are pretty shy. As you can tell about feedback, but uh, hey, anybody here. who's watching or anybody who's on right now, I'm going to have all the notes, all the all the links that were in the chat will be in the body of the YouTube um, link, and, 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 and the YouTube channel is um, Palermo Roads at Palermo Roads YouTube.com front slash at Palermo Roads. So anyway, go ahead, Ernie. No, I was going to say, and, and and just so everybody hears too, like. There's a recorded portion, and then afterwards, it's after hours that I call it, and then we just talk. <laughs> yeah, it's it's yeah. not recorded, and we just ask some really, you know, not some today, any, any but, questions but, you uh, might you might want to yeah. do. But uh, yeah, but it's cool. So anyway, thank you guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye bye. Thanks yeah. everybody for coming. I really yeah, appreciate nice. everybody. Mason, thank you. And uh, uh, every Friday, uh, twelve thirty, and uh, feel free to reach out on me on LinkedIn. And and everybody have a great weekend. Have a good weekend. Thank you, thank you all. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Mason. Thanks, Dominic. Appreciate the People 2.0 advance partner. Yeah, my buddy, he's got a big staffing firm in uh, Toronto. Another guy you want to reach out to is this guy from Bilingual Source. He's such a great guy. Uh, He's like a mentor to me now. His, his name's Greg Benedict. Let me get you his name. Hmm. And he kills it. You know what? You know what he does? Basically, like call centers, um, um, bilingual candidates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's interesting. Um, do, do, do you do? Ta- it, it, reach out to this guy. He's such a great guy and he's always willing to help. Like I love people like this because he's just willing to help and share, you know, and so am I. Yeah. And that, I, it's funny. I've never heard of his, his firm, but that it looks like he's killing it. Oh, he's, he, he was telling me, you know, privately. Why is this frozen on me? You, did you find him? Uh, no, but I, I'm on his website. So, um, what what's his name? I'll find him uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, Greg G R E G. Last name is B E N A D I B A. Cool, I got him here. I bet you he knows a thousand people that I know. Oh yeah, and he's honestly one of those guys, Kill, that you can just you know reach out to him and he'll take a call with you. He's super busy, but you know, like, like he was telling me like how he does training for his team and.